Oh, hi. Hi, um, my name is Michael Zell. I am an illustrator and printmaker here in Providence, Rhode Island. I am probably supposed to be waiting for some more people to show up. So I am just going to let you observe my space. This is my studio. Um, I have a studio space in a old warehouse where we share a bunch of different studios with about 20 artists, mostly ceramicists here in Providence. And this is my tiny corner of the world. Um, I'm gonna just get started and see what happens. So I graduated from SCAD um, in 2014 with a BFA in illustration. Um, after that, I went on to work for ShopScad for about three years, um, which was an incredible experience for me. I got to see the other side of the business world as an artist. I get to work with artists um, and get, got to sell the work and then also sell my own work at ShopScad. So it gave me a good sense of how to sell myself as a fine artist. And I also got to meet incredible SCAD alum along the way and fellow artists. Um, after that, I moved up here to Providence, Providence, Rhode Island, um, where I make art in my studio. Uh, but I mostly do paintings and I also do printmaking, primarily etching and screen printing. Um, and when I'm not doing that, I have a day job at a local mom and pop shop called Frog and Toad. And I am actually just now starting to dip our toes into design work and production work. So I'll be doing more screen printing here in the studio for like t-shirts, totes, um, face masks, uh, a great opportunity to expand my creative range, which is awesome. And then in addition to all of that, I also have a line of accessories and wearable goods called Paper Shuttle. Um, pins, patches, art prints, and screen printed bandanas, um, all of which you can purchase for me or you can get in Savannah at ShopScad. Um, this bandana that we'll be printing today is a brand new design. And I, am in celebration of that, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. So you can go to my Instagram or Paper Shuttle Paper Shuttle's Instagram and enter into the giveaway. And I will be calling a winner on Friday. And today I'm gonna to show you my process of making bandanas and printing them. Um, yeah. So what materials you'll need in screen printing. And let me just tell you now that what I'm gonna be showing you is my process there are many different types of processes when it comes to screen printing. A lot of different printers do it totally different. This is just one little way that I do it that I found works for me. Um, I did not actually learn printmaking at SCAD, or I didn't learn screen printing at SCAD. That was the only printmaking process I didn't learn. I learned that later on. Um, but I definitely encourage you to just like YouTube and find all these other different screen printers to do their own ways. I've I've had to do a lot of just like online research to figure out what best practice is to do for the setup that I have here. Um, so yeah, um, the materials that I use are just, just one type of material you, you could use. Um, the first thing that you'll need obviously is a screen. This is an aluminum white mesh screen and I think it's 100, 110 mesh count. The lower the mesh count, the, the further spread out the, the fibers, which means that you can print more opaque and thicker inks through it. And it's better also for textile printing. Whereas the tighter knit ones are really great for print work, and like archival art prints. Um, you get a lot more crisp lines and details with that. Um, the print or the screen that I have here has purple emulsion on it, as you can see. And on that, I have exposed the design that I'll be printing, which you'll see the finished product in a minute. I use a UV light that exposed through a transparency film onto the emulsion and that photosensitizes it. 
So then I wash it out and then the image that wasn't exposed by the light gets washed out and then we print through that part. Which I guess you can see better once I start printing it. In addition to that, you will need to have a printing board. I have just this large piece of MDF, which is great. It's nice and heavy, so it doesn't shift around on me. And because I'm printing really thin bandanas, I have found that I have had to make a batting board. So I use the batting that's um, used in quilting to create like a soft textile surface um, as a cushion for the bandanas that I print on. And then I've squared out my bandana frame to where it's gonna go. You will also need to tape off the screen so that extra ink doesn't go through it. And I've already kind of done that on the edges here, just the shiny tape here. Um, most some screen printers coat the whole entire screen so that they don't have to tape it off. But my coat, my scoop coater isn't that big, so didn't bother with that. And you will also need a squeegee. This is a soft rubber squeegee, which is great for textile printing because it gives you a better give. Um, and obviously you want to use it a little bit wider than the image that you're printing. If it's smaller, you can still do that. You just have to do multiple passes. Um, ink. ink is a must, obviously. I have Permaset Aqua ink. It is a really great ink that I use that a friend recommended to me. Um, it is eco-friendly, so it's the best for the environment because it doesn't have any solvents in it. And it is a water-based ink. And that is pre-mixed for what we're doing today. Um, and lastly, you'll need a bucket of water because mistakes happen and that's okay. Um, towel, spatula, bandanas. And I think we have everything. I have a couple extra ink tabs that I use to elevate my screen and rest my squeegee on because um, ink gets on that and we don't want that to be resting when we're screen printing. Um, and I think we'll switch to the actual process. I feel like I'm going really fast. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and I guess I should turn my chat on. Okay, so have my screen. I have it clamped in place. And prior to this, I measured out where my bandana is gonna lay on the batting, batting board. And this makes sure, basically it's my registration. So make sure that I print it centered every single time. Super useful. Some people use transparencies that they tape to the edge of the batting board and then constantly just lay over and fidget it. That's a great way to do it too. That's how I started doing it. Um, but since I'm doing a large run of these things, I just kind of cut out that extra process. Next, we are going to put some ink on the screen. And I have about a hundred of these bandanas. I'm not going to be printing them for you all in 30 minutes. I wish I could, but I'm not that fast. Um, but I'll print a few for you, with you together, and we can go from there. What's the difference between lithograph and screen printing? Lithograph is a process using stones and oil-based crayons. So that's a completely different printmaking process. Lithograph, lithography is um, primarily used for printing on paper. I think you could print on textiles with it. I'm sure people have printed on textiles with it. But screen print is really good for, well, actually they're both very fast. So you can use them both for fast, but lithography has a lot more processes to it that kind of require equipment that most print shops are equipped with, whereas screen printing is much more easily accessible to do at home. 
I did do lithography at SCAD and it was a great class. Highly recommend. It's probably the hardest printmaking technique. So if you go in and do that first, then everything else is gonna be super easy, except etching. Etching's a different beast. So I am laying out my ink. I have this really, really beautiful golden ochre color that I mixed for this Sundance bandana that we're gonna be printing. And I put on a liberal amount, but not too much and not too little. Too little, you'll just be adding to it constantly and too much, it'll just get soupy at the bottom and potentially leak over the edge. Um, but as you can see, I just have a good amount there. And the first step that we're gonna have to do is to flood the screen. And that is gonna be just the first pull. That's gonna fill in all of those areas that are gonna be printed and prep the first print for us. Um, and I also taped off, taped off on my screen. I'm not sure if you can see where, but I taped it off with the edge of the artwork goes. So that way when the ink is going, I can, I can see with my squeegee where it's gonna go. So I'm not off registered at all. So we're gonna flood the screen. And that's just a nice gentle pull. That activates the screen and now there is a good first layer of ink in there. So I'm gonna leave that there. And I think we are good to go. I'm gonna lift my screen and set it down on my bandana. And we're gonna do two poles. I have found that with this type of material and on this surface that I'm printing, two poles is really good. Um, you want to be assertive, not aggressive with your polling. So don't be hard with it because you'll blow out and you'll just push too much ink out. And don't choose too soft with it because then you won't be pushing enough. So just like a good assertive tight pull. Bounce it off. And then we're gonna pull up again. All right. So that has been printed. I don't normally put any adhesive on the bottom of my board. So when I lift this up, the bandana will stick to the screen. So I just pull it up a little bit and gently hold it down with my hand. And then that's gonna reveal the bandana. Voila. But before we can enjoy the bandana, now we have a bunch of open areas on the screen, which could potentially dry really fast. So we are going to flood the screen again by pushing the ink back up to the top to start. That is going to set up our next print and um, fill in all those areas so that they don't dry out too quickly. If you do have to like use the restroom or got to talk to a friend or take a phone call, it is water-based ink, so you can always miss it if you think you're going to be away for a little while, and then it'll just keep it wet so that it doesn't dry and cake up inside the screen. Um, another question. How do you choose what colors to work with on these bandanas? Um, the colors I choose are based on usually the design that I'm going to be using. Um, for example, this one is all about the sun. So it's called the Sundance, and it's got some eyes in the sun and some palm trees and then a couple heliads, heliads dancing. Um, obviously, I, I wanted to do something more yellow with this one on a natural, a natural tone bandana. Um, my other bandanas, um, I kind of just, I love, I love a monochromatic color scheme. So I always kind of stick with the color that the bandana is just in the lighter or darker color. What brand of squeegee do you use? I get my squeegees from a place called Victory Factory. They are based in New York City. And they are actually where I get all of my screens as well. Um, this squeegee is sold by the inch. I think it's like a dollar or two per inch. And you can get soft rubber or hard rubber. And this I think is a 20 inch. I think it was like 25 bucks, um, math. So I loaded my next bandana, ready to go. I moved my thing out of the way, so we're ready to print. So I'm just gonna come up at the top and we're gonna do a nice sort of pull. Stop. 
get all that extra ink off of the off of the squeegee. And then we're gonna come up and grab some more ink and do a second fold. Bounce it off. Set that to the side and then we're just gonna lift it up. And voila. You can kind of see it. Like I wanna show you it, but I also have to flood the screen because we do not want it to dry out on us. We have a hundred bandanas to print and we are not trying to wash out our screen just yet. So the tricky part about printing in a studio setup like this is that my entire studio, studio becomes my drying rack. So I'll just be running around laying them on any surface that's clean. Um, like I said, these bandanas are going live on my way. tonight. I think they actually are already live. live. Um, but you can go to my Instagram and Paper Shuttle's Instagram and enter in the giveaway. Enter to be, enter, <laughs> enter the giveaway to win a bandana. So there's two chances to win. Um, yeah. Question. How often do you clean the printing board? I never clean the printing board. It is always this lovely. Um, this, so printing boards that don't have fabric on top of it are easier to clean. Um, these bandanas are very light and very transparent. So there is always gonna be a chance that the ink will go through on the backside especially if you're pushing too hard or do too many pulls. I have found that two pulls for me is a really good sweet spot. Um, sometimes I get some ink that goes through the bottom, but it doesn't, it dries fast enough where it's not an issue where it's printing on the back. As you can see, there's remnants of old prints, but I kind of like that. And what is the best fabric to use? Uh, any fabric really. It all depends on what you, so, I guess, how should I say this? You can print on anything. Because these bandanas are so thin, I have a special board that I print on. But if you were printing on, say, like a hoodie or a sweatshirt that's a little bit denser and a little bit more soft, you wouldn't necessarily need a batting board. Batting board. You would just need a board that it would slip over and because this is textile printing ink, you can really print on the textile. I would probably say certain things like silk have special inks for them. I think, I think people use like discharging's or dyes um, for silk. And I think I would say cotton is probably obviously the best one to print on. There are synthetic fabrics that are a little bit harder to print on because the ink doesn't want to, it's harder for the ink to bond to the fabric. So that's where plastisol or solvent-based inks come in handy. Oh, I'm so distracted. I'm never gonna get these bandanas in. Um, and then don't forget to flood. At some point, I'll just add more ink to it. And if I feel like I'm getting a little bit low or it's getting a little bit dry, I'll just add more ink to it or add some water to it to reactivate it. And I'm gonna run around and find a spot for these. How long does it take for one bandana to dry? So the best practice is to let them air dry overnight. You want to allow the, the ink to uh, allow all the water in the ink to evaporate. So the best way to do that is to do it overnight. Unless you have a machine like a flash dryer that'll immediately cook it so that it gets all the water evaporated. The process of drying your bandana and curing the bandana are two different things. 
Um, it will dry to the touch in about like 10, 15 minutes. Um, but that doesn't mean that the ink is bonded to the fibers of the cut. In order to do that, you have to essentially superheat the bandana or the textile that you're printing on. Superheat it to a temperature that allows the, the molecules of the ink to bond to the fabric so that when you go to wash it in the washing machine, it all doesn't fall out. Um, I learned that the hard way when I was printing, when I first printed these bandanas with Blick ink, I found that Blick screen printing ink is not a very good ink to use. It's very chalky and very pigmented. So all of that really, it really washed out after the first wash. But you can use a, an iron if you just go over the, pre, the, um, the design that you're using when you're finished. Um, that'll cure it if you do like a good couple minutes over an iron. I have found that I use for large batches like this, I honestly just throw them in the dryer for a good two hours on high heat. And I haven't had any issues with that. Oh, this is getting dry. I also have a flash dryer now. Um, so that is also a great way. It, it cooks it in like under two minutes. So most inks that you buy have, have that information, have that information on the packaging. Are these inks totally waterproof or are they dry? After they're dry. Yes, it's like um, a lot of t-shirts are printed with, with water-based ink. Water is just the, water is just the, um, I don't know, the, uh, the middleman. So these are acrylic, these are acrylic inks that we're using. It's just water-based so that when the water evaporates, then the acrylic is stuck to the fabric. But yeah, they're waterproof. Most t-shirts <clears throat> are printed with water-based ink. Um, these bandanas are waterproof. Yeah. When did you find your artistic style at SCAD? I found my artistic style at SCAD, honestly, when I started my printmaking journey, when I started my printmaking journey, oh, and I never flooded it, hey, y'all. Um, so you see how I forgot to flood it. If you're worried, you can just give it a nice good old spritz. And then once we push it through, it'll, it'll push it off. Um, my artistic style developed probably about like my junior year. Um, I was taking illustration classes and I was sort of struggling with trying to do the assignment in illustration and also, and also trying to find my own style, which was really hard. I found um, when I didn't have a prompt or a, an assignment that I was able to kind of be more free with what I wanted to do. And that's kind of where the printmaking department came in. I got to try different techniques and do different things without, without needing to adhere to a, like a freelance style assignment. Um, yeah, and I highly recommend What material did you help with the stencil? Let me show you. Hold on. So this is a transparency that I had printed by an actual, another scatalon named Elizabeth Yant, who runs Mustard Beetle. She is also a screen printer and maker, an incredible artist. Um, she printed this out for me. This is really good because the blacks are completely UV light proof. So when this lays on the screen and I'm exposing it, everywhere where it's black, light does not penetrate. So that lets the emulsion stay soft. Everywhere where the light penetrates, it hits the emulsion and it hardens. That means when I go to wash it out, 
all of those areas that, that didn't get penetrated by the light will wash out. And that is our printed image. Oh my gosh, I did not float it again. Look at me. So this usually takes me like a few hours, but it's kind of nice. You just kind of zoom out, put on a podcast or a TV show. Um, and then when it comes to washing out your screen, you don't have to rush straight to the rush straight to the the washout to get all the stuff out using like a pretty high power hose. You can pretty much get it all out. It'll probably last for a while before you need to really get it out. And then I could probably get like a few hundred a few hundred runs with this screen the way it is before it starts to get um, dried up and clumpy on me. Eventually, eventually I will have to reclaim this screen and get rid of it and then recode it and then reprint it. Tell us about SCAD art sales. That's such a pointed question. Um, so I used to work for SCAD um, at StratScad and SCAD art sales didn't come until after I left, but a very good friend of mine is the head of Scat Art Sales. And it is basically an incredible opportunity for buyers and designers to use local and Scat alum specifically. Um, artwork from them in homes. So it's a great way for people to come find artwork that they want to buy for their home usually a lot higher priced and larger scale. Um, they are pretty cool. Is there an accessory that you really don't like making? If not, why? Um, these bandanas, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I enjoy making these bandanas, but these probably are the most time consuming, I would say, and have the, the most prep. Um, all of these blank bandanas that I buy, I have to iron each individual one so they're flat. Um, and then there's the process of actually printing all 100 of them. I think that's, yeah, I like making all of them. I probably wouldn't do it if I didn't like doing it. It's a labor of love. It's a labor of love. I don't know if you can hear. Yeah. So screen printing is a really great way to quickly do printmaking. Um, if you are at SCAD or you are going to be looking at going to SCAD, I highly recommend taking advantage of your, your gosh, electives. I did not find printmaking until I did an elective. Um, I took intro to printmaking with Deb Odin and it was the best class I think I ever took at SCAD, aside from world mythology with Mary Dahl. But, it was an incredible experience that I don't think I don't think I would have continued in illustration if I had known about the making sooner. I think illustration was kind of like a good entryway for me. And then I eventually discovered that I, I had a love for printmaking, but it was too late in my my academic career. Are y'all having fun? I don't know. 
Do you think illustration skills benefit your printmaking process 100%? Yes, but you don't need to be an illustrator to be a printmaker. So many photo, photo students do printmaking. I know some people who do incredible photo work um, in printmaking. Um, I find that printmaking is just an opportunity for me to use a different medium, like painting or like drawing or doing digital illustration. It's just another way for me to put my art on something. Um, it just has a more personal, I guess, than other mediums because I actually am the one putting it on something and then selling it to someone. Um, I'm just, thank you guys for all these questions. What inspired you to most to make the shift towards printmaking? I'm not dyslexic, it's just really far from it. Um, what inspired me to make the shift towards printmaking? Um, honestly, that first printmaking class that I took, I took intro to printmaking, so that allowed me to do relief printmaking, etching, and litho but it was it was contemplating so that was it was a little bit different but um it showed me something that i had never experienced before i didn't do any printmaking at all of any sort in high school um so it was the first time that i had been exposed to it and I think that was a way for me to do my illustration in a more fine art manner. Only I'm wearing a hat when I do this, but my hair looks really good today. Um, a hat, if you have a build hat, that's great because you can just rest it on the bill. Um, and sometimes, you know, you gotta sacrifice a good hair day. But yeah, I would say, just taking the class and seeing that it was even there was enough for me. I probably would have switched my major if it wasn't too late. Um, and then when I moved to Providence, it was great because there's actually a local print shop here. Um, that was a great opportunity for me to continue doing printmaking. Because printmaking is a little bit hard to do outside of college unless you have a community print shop to go to. Screen printing is pretty easy to do at home, but processes like etching and lithography are a little bit more difficult and a little bit more cost preventative. Screen printing is, there are so many YouTube videos on how to DIY screen print at home. I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you guys are distance learning. You can do so much, much. Do you think at what point in high school did you realize you wanted to pursue art and design as a career? Oh, high school, more like elementary school. I always wanted to be an artist. I just didn't know what that entailed. Um, I actually went to one of SCAD's, one of SCAD's summer camps. It was, a, it was Rising Star. I think my junior, no, my sophomore year of high school. And I actually didn't apply to any other schools. But I had such an incredible time in that, that program that I was just like, I need to go here. And I knew that I wanted to do, of course, my mom's like, do graphic design because that's the money maker. But I wanted to, I found illustration, but I didn't even know that that was an opportunity to take. So I, I chose to do illustration and I had some incredible professors who pushed me and I had the opportunity to use my electives to try other things, which was also great. Let me just tell you, doing this in 90 degree summer weather is not fun. Luckily, it's fall, so. I hope you guys can hear me. Great job, Michael. Thanks. 
which do you enjoy more, your mural work or your screen printing? Mm, that's hard. I, there are two different things. Two different things. And I've only recently started doing murals, so I haven't had a chance to hate them yet. I, there are two different things. One's more fine art, one's more commercial. How do you break into the mural works? How do you break into the mural work world? Um, Providence actually has a really great mural public art scene. We actually have a nonprofit here called Avenue Concept where they actually pair artists with open wall spaces and also private spaces actually just today commissioned for an office space downtown here. But I'll also be doing another mural next week outside. So it's kind of just about um, showing that you want to do it. I My first mural was actually at my day job, Frog and Toad. Um, I painted their window and that was a really great opportunity um, because it showed me that I could do it and then I could have it on my Instagram and people could see it. And that's actually how the <clears throat> Mural company found me. They're not a company, they're not profit. Um, so yeah, I would say just find a wall that is open and accessible, ask permission if, if it's the public wall. Or even just like painting a wall in your room or in your house and documenting it and just having that in your portfolio to show that you can do it and you do want to do it. I think that's a really great, it's a really great piece of advice. How often do you incorporate graphic design into your work? Um, I guess it just depends on what you would call graphic design. Um, a lot of these things are illustrated by hand. I, I try to maintain a natural, traditional hand-drawn technique, and then I scan it in, and then I take it into Illustrator and vectorize it, and then I clean it up in Illustrator. So I, I don't know if, if that's streaming by graphic design. I don't do typography well, um, if that's also what you mean. I'm going to be swimming in bandanas. Can this one? Okay, so I'm gonna actually probably just be doing this until I die. Um, I hope you guys had a great time. I certainly did. Um, again, check out my Instagram, check out in, uh, Paper Shuttle's Instagram. I know scad.edu is also posting about it. We're in that giveaway, get yourself a bandana. If you don't wanna try your luck, they are for sale. Um, and if you don't wanna order it online, they will be going to shop scad soon as well. So thank you guys all very much for this time. I hope it was helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, obviously feel free to DM me. My Instagram is here on this thing somewhere. Um, I'm always here to answer any questions, so. Say good night, Michael. Was that it? I uh, say good night. Oh, good night. <laughs> And happy quarantining. <laughs>